Okay. I have no idea how this is going to work because I don't really talk very much and I have to sound like a happy, energetic person and I'm not a very happy, energetic person. So I'm going to try and be a bit more active video-wise with more verbal communication. Firstly, because a lot of people that have subscribed to my YouTube aren't following my Tumblr, so you don't get as the YouTube people don't get as much information as the Tumblr people. Information should be everywhere, so I'm gonna kind of say everything twice, so to speak. Also because a couple of my followers on Tumblr were kind of wanting video resources because, you know, the reading's difficult and so forth. So we're gonna try and, you know, make it a bit easier on everyone and give as much resources as possible and see how it goes. Hopefully this works. So I'm gonna remake today, not really remake in this first video, we're talking about purchase because there's a lot of these things on the market and we're not talking about just the ooh, purchase um kind of sandy purchase ones are supposed to file down their nails but there's a lot of incredibly bad choices out there and i don't know why they sell them they're really hurtful they can actually kill birds if you know they use them the right way we're gonna go through that and make sure that you don't hurt your bird just because you don't you don't know the two ones i use which are probably like the only ones I really think you should use are cement perches, which I don't know if this thing focuses, there you go. Um, and it's kind of, it's not really chunky, it's kind of, it's smooth, but it's, you know, got, it's kind of like asphalt, I guess would be the word I would use to describe. So when they stand on it, it's not scraping away at their feet, it's scraping at their nails, but it's comfortable for their toes and so forth. And the other one I use is the half sanded ones, it can oh, focuses, and it's not sanded here where the pads of their feet go, but it's sanded on the sides. <coughs> um, so it also doesn't scrape away their feet. The issue with these ones is the sand on the side is soluble grit, <coughs> and um, grit is not good for parrot species because they already hull their seeds before they ingest them, so they're <clears throat> kind of their digestive system isn't designed to withstand hard things, but soluble grit is relatively okay. Cuddle bone is an example of soluble grit, or um, calcium and things like that. You don't want them chewing at it and swallowing a ton, because it can cause, you know, impactions and it can, you know, it can kind of cut up their insides if they swallow too much of it. But because it's soluble, it does kind of get digested by the acids in their digestive system before it reaches the gizzard, which is where most of the damage occurs. As in the gizzard is when it get grinds down the seeds, and so if it's insoluble, by the time it makes it to the gizzard, it's being ground against the sides of their, kind of, you know, their organ, and it can make them bleed, and it can cause all sorts of, you know, infections and damage. So, soluble grit is relatively okay for them. If they swallow some, it doesn't it's not going to kill them, but if your bird is sitting there eating the entire side of the perch, you may run into problems. And if your bird is sitting there eating the entire thing of grit off of this, you should get them checked out by a vet because that tends to suggest there is something wrong with their diet. And, you know, they might be deficient in something or they might be ill. And so do get that checked out. The common ones that you'll see out on the market are for dowel type perches. I don't think they have a dowel when we're here. Um, but they're like sandpaper, pretty much, that goes over top of a dowel perch. And there's tons of problems with those. First of all, they tend to be insoluble grit, which is designed for more for species like finches and doves that don't haul their seeds before they eat them. So their stomach lining and gizzard lining and everything is a lot thicker and it's meant to withstand, you know, harsh surfaces. So when it gets to there, it can aid the gizzard into grinding the seeds and digesting better, but parrots, it's just gonna hurt them on the inside. It's gonna give them infections, compactions, you know, lots of damage that we don't really want to be dealing with. Not, not good in itself right there. I don't know why they're marketing it for parrots, just for the fact that it can really do some serious damage. The other problem with those is they don't actually tend to fit dowel perches too well. They slide, they spin around, and obviously if your bird is clipped or flighted, regardless, they're gonna flip upside down, they're gonna, you know, flutter and hurt themselves, they can, you know, break their bones and 
get head trauma and you know, that is not something we want. That's a major hazard. I wouldn't want that anywhere near my bird. What? What are you doing? What'd you find? Eating all the crumbs off the floor. The next one is, they're kind of like these, only they're sanded all the way around. And so what that means is when, you know, they're standing, you want to stand on the perch? Good girl. When they're standing on the perch, rather than the foot being on, you know, nice plastic, and almost like you're standing barefoot in gravel. And so their scales are getting rubbed off and shipped away. They're getting cuts on their feet. They're getting, you know, bumble foot, which is like a ton of sores and infections. And it can really affect their perching. And the fact that birds stand on their feet all the time is, you know, it's really important that we do ensure that their perches are comfortable, they're dynamic, they're, you want a lot of different shapes, like if you, I don't know if you can see any of the ones in here, but we've got like, a comfy perch, we've got a really fat one up here that's like, natural wood, a bunch of different sizes anyways. Not a good choice when they're sitting there standing on essentially sandpaper, and it, the little grains can actually get stuck in their feet themselves and cause infections and cuts and wounds and it's just, it's just not, it's not good all. So I'm already not even happy and excited anymore. This is not good. The other thing with that is if they're standing and pruning my hair, does my hair, is it good? Getting a new hairdo. Another problem with fully sanded perches and perch covers is Where's it going? Where are we going with this? What did I write down? If you stand on a flat surface, you're gonna fly. I have a flat surface for you to stand on. I got a book. Can you see? Good girl. Hey. As you'll notice, they're lifting up. The pads of her back toes are lifting up a little bit, but the front toes also lifting up a little bit, so her nails are a tad long. If her nails were an appropriate length, all the pads would be perfectly flat on the surface. So a healthy clip nail would be like this and the nail will just kind of be a nail. And if they're too long, the pads of their toes will be lifting up and they'll be resting on the nail. So hers are a bit long. If you let nails get too long, they can end up injuring the feet. They can curl in on themselves. They can, the quick, the vein inside the nail can overgrow. And then the next time you try and trim your nails, you'll cut them, they'll bleed, it'll be a, you know, horrendous disaster. It can, you know, lead to bacterial infections and so forth. So, we really want to make sure we keep their nails in appropriate length. These do not replace nail trimming. Never in my life will these ever replace nail trimming. Um, unless, like, no. We're either going to put them, like, in front of a food dish or in front of a favorite toy or like on the door of a cage where they pass by often and they're moving so their nails will, you know, be frictiony and rub them down. Really all these are meant for is taking sharpness off the nail so they'll grow back a bit slower at a slower rate because they're kind of gradually being rubbed down. But they will continue to grow so you still will need to trim them. You can, you know, use small cat clippers or preferred human nail clippers are not the best option because they're flat. So when you try and cut a nail, it can splinter the nail and that can get infected. It's just, it's not, it puts a lot of stress on the nail. It's not a good option. But like little small cat clipper ones, if I can figure out how to edit this video, I'll put a picture here, maybe, of what I mean by little, they look like scissors, but they're kind of round at the end. So yeah, I'll, I'll figure out how to put a picture right here. If you're nervous about cutting a bird's nails or they're really squirmy, you probably should not be cutting them yourself because you can cut them if it's a really small bird like these guys they can kick and you can accidentally cut their entire toe which just disaster you do not want to end up doing that what you can do is you can you know take them to your vet and get them to show you how to do it you can ask to help and learn how to do it so you don't have to pay for it every time but paying for it to happen a couple times beforehand so that way you know you don't hurt them is definitely a much better option. Um, what I like to do with small guys is, they're over here, small guys, is I like to file their nails and I don't know if I've uploaded a video here before but I basically ask them to shake when you know they give me their foot and I just take my nail file and gently rub down their nails you know every couple weeks or whatever. If I'm cutting their nails and they you know get nervous and they kick 
<clears throat> you know, there's a lesser chance with a nail file that I'll end up going into the quick and making them bleed. And the best kind of nail files that will work are those kind of thick, kind of want to say foamy ones, where they're kind of really fine granules, not like big metal ones that are... And I'll upload a picture here if I can figure out how to do it. Um, the kind of thick ones that you use it. I don't know if they use them at beauty salons. I don't go to beauty salons. Maybe they do. We shall find out. But yeah, those work best just because they're fine grains so you're not moving the entire toe while you're trying to do it. It's a lot softer on the nail and helps file it down a bit better. So the finer the grain, the better with them. They're not so fine that all it does is smooth it. You get the point. I think that's all I had to really say about these. But yeah, so just to go over. The reason why these types of cement perches that are completely cemented all the way around are okay, but ones that are completely sanded all the way around aren't, is that these are a bunch of really small granules that I can just pick off, so it's like a gravel path in barefoot. So, you know, there's particles getting stuck to your feet, you're walking, it's pressing into your feet, it's scraping at your feet, it's not good, whereas this, it's kind of, it's more gentle, like I can go like this and forever and it's not hurting me, whereas if I go like that, like it kind of scratches at my hand. So it would kind of compare walking down, you know, a paved road versus walking down a gravel path. There's going to get bits stuck in your feet in the gravel path. You're going to, you know, might start bleeding on the gravel path. So definitely not a good option just because this it's, it's a lot smoother. It's a lot more gentle on their feet. I don't, I wouldn't say they file better personally. It might just be because my birds are small. So not really, it doesn't, it's not too effective on their feet. These ones work better for them because they're finer grains. You know, half sanded. Make sure they're half sanded. So, just because they stand on their feet all day, there's no possible way for a parrot to sit down. We really do have to be very, very careful about what we let them perch on. We cannot give them plain, which I think you guys are sitting on top of a cage. The only time I use a dabble perch here, here, is in their travel cage because it's flat and it's easy for them to hold on to. So if we're driving in a car, it's not like sitting on an angle where they can fall over and have difficulty perching. So it's just flat and it's easy and this cage has, needs to be spacious. So only there's only like two perches in there. So that way if they do fall, they don't hit a perch on the way down. That's the only time I use owl perches. Let's see if I can get one. Kind of like if you were walking barefoot down a cement path every single day, your feet would get sore, you'd lose your arches, you'd have back pain, you'd get arthritis. Whereas if you're walking on a bunch of different surfaces, you have good shoes and, you know, walking up and down hills, it takes the pressure off their feet rather than sitting like this. And, you know, if you, you would use monkey bars and you get like those blisters on your hands from the friction. So with these, it helps take the pressure off their feet. So it aims at different angles and instead of pressure at the exact same thickness, different thicknesses, but this one you got different textures and different thicknesses and angles are really the most important thing because I can give them a bunch of these and I can give them a bunch of these, but it's still the same amount of pressure on their feet. They're still standing flat footed. Well, we would like how we would be standing flat footed on a hard surface. Like this is not a nice perch to be standing on. It's not a nice soft wood. This is not going to make much of a difference for their feet. They're still going to get bumblefoot and arthritis and all sorts of problems. Whereas, you know, in the wild when they're walking on a ton of these and getting a bunch of different, you know, different textures of woods, different, you know, shapes of woods, different angles, different... I've got a, I've got a really funky one in there I wish I had taken out, but, you know, really... This is really light wood. This is really kind of soft. So it's nicer on their feet. Much better for them <laughs> than sitting on this all day. Like the, these are horrible, horrible, horrible for their feet. Bird feet are probably like one of the most important things. Feathers would probably be top of my list. Feathers and feet are kind of the top two things we need to be taking care of. These, wrong one. These all the time is not the way to be taking care of their feet. We do need to be giving them, you know, a variety of textures and shapes and angles and we really need to be taking care of their feet. Otherwise, you will run into bumblefoot, you will run into infections and cuts and bruises and they will be having scales taken off their feet because they're on really bad perches and so do be careful, do research your perches, make sure that they are soluble grit 
if you do get one like this that is gritty. And if your bird is, like my birds don't touch this at all, they don't even try and eat it, so it's fine for them. But if your bird is picking and eating at this, do get them checked out by a vet because something's wrong with their diet because they really shouldn't have to eat this grit. They shouldn't feel inclined to do it unless something is missing nutritionally from their diet. That's kind of it. <clears throat> so I hope this went over kind of well. I'm hoping I'll be able to edit this and make it less jumbly and jangly and... What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope this went over pretty well. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can comment down below or send me a message or... Uh, you can message me on my blog, thepacificparrotlet.tumblr.com um, which I think I link down below. I don't really remember if I do that or not. Um, let me know if you like this video or not, and if I should make more, if I shouldn't, if there's something I should change, if, I don't know, maybe you'd actually like to see a bird in the video. I was trying, but she left. <laughs> um, so hopefully this was interesting enough and informative, and if you would like to see the actual text post that might be a bit more conformed for some of you guys to figure out, I will link it down here below at some point and you know hopefully hopefully this went over pretty well so thank you for watching and 